Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make this fun game in Make Code Arcade. As you can see, it's a little flying game where uh, I have a projectile that can shoot my enemies, and I also have a life system, so every time I hit my enemy, I lose a life. So if this is your first Make Code Arcade tutorial, Make Code Arcade is a website that basically allows you to use blocks, JavaScript, and Python as well to create games which is pretty cool. Uh, let's open up a new project here. We'll call it Flying Man 2, since I already have one version of the game. We'll call it Flying Man 2. You guys can call it whatever you want. There's a little glitch here on the side. Let me open it up again so it's clean. So right here on your left side is your console. Uh, this is where your game will actually be played. This is where you can full screen it if you want to click that button down there. Um, but today we're going to be using the blocks to create this simple game. So to start off guys, we have a block here that says on start. And what we're going to do first is we're going to actually set the background. So right now the screen's all black. In our game we don't really want that. So we can set the background image to something or we can set the color. I'm going to set the color uh, just to keep it simple. We'll go with a nice blue. Uh, you guys can make it whichever color you'd like. But now, if you guys refresh your console, you guys should see a nice blue background. So moving on, we have to add a character to our game now. So if you guys look at sprites, these are basically what characters are, are called in make code. So if we slide this block in here and we refresh our page, we're not going to see anything. And the reason that that happens is because we didn't tell it what character to create. So this is going to say set my sprite. So basically make a character and it's going to be a type of player. So this is going to be our player. Now we could draw a person here or we can go to the gallery and we can actually select someone. So I'm going to select, uh, I don't know, maybe this guy here. This guy looks cool. Done. Let's add him. All right. Now if we refresh our game, oh, there we go. We have him. But I can't really move him around. I can't click anything. Nothing really happens in our game yet, right? So now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to be able to make him move around. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to go over to this controller section here and we're going to get the block that says move my sprite with buttons. Now you may be wondering what this does. Well, exactly what it says. It's going to be able to make our character move around. So now I can use the arrow keys. I can use WASD and that should be able to make it move around the screen. But now what if I go too far left or what if I go too far up? He goes off my screen and I can't see him anymore, right? So it's set my sprite to stay in screen and we're going to turn it on. So what that basically is saying is he shouldn't be able to leave our screen. So now he can go to every single corner of our screen, but he won't be able to leave it. So he's kind of stuck on our screen, which is what we want. We want to always be able to see our little sprite. All right, now it's time we add some flair into our game. So in order to do that, we're going to go over to controller and we're going to get this block that says on a button pressed. What this will do is it'll basically allow us to create a projectile when we click a certain button. So in this case, the button's going to be A, but we can also change this to B or any of the other buttons. So let's make it B for now, uh, just because B is not doing anything right now, and we can use B down here, whereas uh, A would be used in the WSD. So for our projectile, we're going to go over to sprites, and we're going to scroll down just a bit, set projectile to projectile from my sprite with VX and VY. Now you might be thinking, oh my god, what is this? What is this huge block? What does it do? I'll, I'll break it down for you. Uh, setting the projectile will basically create the projectile. This little block here is an empty image because it doesn't know what projectile you want yet. And from my sprite basically just means from your character. Now with VX and VY, I can go into detail with velocity, but um, instead I'm gonna keep it pretty simple. And we're just gonna create a simple projectile before I dive into velocity let's make it uh what should be is there like a little fireball or something yeah uh, that'll do that's like a little little fireball so now if we if we try it out let's see what happens in our game oh sorry it's it's b so you guys can see my players shooting fireballs but why are they all going diagonally i don't want that to happen so the reason that's happening is because i told it with velocity in the x-axis to be 50 and velocity in the y-axis to be 50. So in this game, if you guys looked at my example at the beginning, you guys should have seen that my fireball was only shooting 
horizontally. So that means there was a number here on the horizontal axis, whereas the VY was zero. So instead, if you guys take a look now, let's see what happens. Now, my fireballs are only shooting horizontally, right? But they're shooting kind of slow. I kind of want to speed them up. So we're going to increase the velocity to max it out at 100. And now our fireballs, which are arguably bigger than our character, are now shooting left and right. Our game is coming together pretty well now. We have our men shooting fireballs. So now I think it's time we should add some enemies. Now in order to do that, we're going to head over to game. And then we're going to hit on game update every 500 ms. Now this block will basically allow you to continue to keep adding enemies every 500 ms. But we can change this. So instead, let's make it 2 seconds. You guys can make it whatever you like. That's just how often your enemies would spawn. So we're going to create a new enemy. We're going to go over to sprites. And we're going to change this up a bit. So this, this sprite, it's not going to be our player. It's going to be an enemy. So we're going to change player. We're going to change this over to enemy. And let's give him a picture. Let's maybe make him, what's a scary enemy? These are pretty scary. Let's make him a ghost. And let's make him kind of look this way. Kind of like a, like a dusk skull. So uh, he's coming in, um, but as you can see now, he's just kind of here, right? He's not really moving, nothing's happening, right? So in order to move him, what we're going to do is we're going to go over here, and we're going to go over to the physics part of sprites. And we're going to get a block that says set position to X and Y. So now, if you guys take a quick look here, set my sprite. Uh, is referring to our sprite, which is a player, and sprite 2 is referring to our ghost sprite. So instead, we're going to change my sprite to my sprite 2 so that we can keep it consistent down here. So the game knows what we're talking about. When I set the position to x at 0 and y at 0, my, my little enemy spawned in the top left corner. You guys could barely see him. He's all the way up here. So the reason that happened is because the coordinate system on make code is a bit different than Maybe what you're used to, if you guys have coded on Scratch before or anything else, we're going to we're gonna change this up. So we want them to spawn on this side. So this would make the X value around, let's say, 100. And we want them to spawn anywhere between the top and the bottom, right? So this is 100, actually. So maybe we'll make this, uh, we'll make this like 170, maybe 175. Oh, 160 is actually the max on make code, so we'll make it 160. So 160 it is, uh, but now if you guys if you guys take a look, uh, he's not really moving, and that's because we set the position. We didn't tell him to move yet. So instead of doing this, first I'm gonna get him to move. So we're gonna go here, and in order to make him move, guys, it's actually pretty simple. The same way we made our projectile move, we're gonna use the velocity. So we're gonna change the my sprite to my sprite two in order to keep it. Uh, consistent with our ghost make sure we're not moving our player and we're going to change the velocity of the x now if we made him spawn on the left side I'll, I'll, I'll make him spawn in the on the left side to make it easier for you guys he's currently going diagonally down my screen right but what we want is we want him to be going the other way and we don't want him to be moving diagonally so we're going to keep this back at 160 so we can start on the right side and move towards the left side and the way we're going to do that is we're going to make the y velocity zero. So now if you guys take a look, he's just moving constantly to the right. So if positive velocity makes him move to the right, how do you guys think we're going to make him go to the left? You got it, negative velocity. So we can actually change the velocity using this little meter here. So I'm going to make the meter uh, negative, what's the most? Let's do negative 80. 79 is close enough. Uh, let's see what it is. Let's see what happens. So now you guys can see that the, the ghost kind of moves from the right side to the left side, which is perfect. That's what we want. But there's a little issue. Um, I told his position to be at the top of the screen. So now every two seconds, a new ghost is coming from the top of the screen. I want him to spawn anywhere from the top to the bottom of the screen. But that is using the y-axis. So if I made this 50, for example, they would spawn in like this. 
they would spawn in from the middle and is and that's not really what i want so i want it to spawn anyway so to do that we will go to math and we can pick a random y value so what this will do is it'll basically allow the ghost to spawn anywhere in between two certain points that we give it so let's make this like 10 and 100 and now let's see so the first ghost comes in at the bottom the second one kind of higher and the third one at the top and our game's coming along pretty nicely there's just a couple things that don't work so right now my fireball when i when i use it it's not it's not doing anything it's not protecting me right but i also don't have any lives i don't have any hearts so let's add that right now so in order, in order to add some lives and hearts it's actually pretty easy in make code since it's kind of like an arcade based game like make code loves to make it easy for us so all we got to do is go to info and we are going to set live set life sorry not set lives set life to three so what this will do is it'll give us three hearts in the top left corner of our screen and if we head over to info once again we can actually set a score so we'll set the score to zero as well as soon as the game starts so now if you guys take a look at the top right we have our score in the top left we have our health and that's on the game start so that's because when we start the game uh these are going to be our, our kind of like variables if you guys have been used to coding before you guys know initializing variables right we always set the value prior to the game start uh for things like lives and score all right guys so we're almost done our game now what we got to do is we got to make sure our fireballs actually kill our enemies all right so in order to do that we're going to get a block that says on sprite of kind uh it's an overlaps so we're going to go over here and this block is basically going to say what happens when two things in our game touch you can do it either way but i'll just do projectile first because our projectile is going to be hitting the enemy so let's do that and then i'm going to say I want to change my score by one because I killed an enemy. I gotta get I gotta get some points, right, guys? So we're gonna go over to change score by one. And now, now let's see what happens. So I'm gonna I'm gonna dodge the first one. Whoa! Look at that! I got seven points. I only killed one enemy though. Why does that happen? So the reason that happens, guys, is because in Make Code Arcade, uh, every time Fireball is touching the enemy. Basically, it's giving me a point. So every pixel that my fireball moves through, it increases my score by one. So in order to fix that, guys, it's pretty simple, actually. We're just going to go over to our sprites, and we're going to get the block that says destroy, destroy, destroy. There's a block, uh, destroy my sprite. There it is. So this block here will basically allow you to um, destroy whichever, whichever sprite you want during the specific time. So in this case, we're going to do destroy my sprite too, because we want our enemy to be dead. So now let's take a look at what happens when I hit him with the fireball. Boom, he's dead. And I get my score. Perfect. But if you guys take a look, my fireball just got two kills in a row. You guys see that? So I don't really want that to happen. I want my fireball to also be destroyed. So we can duplicate this block right here with right click. And I'm going to destroy my projectile. So now, if you guys take a look, uh, every time I use my fireball, it'll destroy the ghost and the fireball will disappear. So that's pretty good. But now there's one more part. So when the ghost hit me, I don't lose a life currently. Let's change that. So I'm going to get a block again that says, here, let me stop it first. I'm going to get a block, guys, that says on sprite of kind overlap once again. This one's going to be a different overlap. This one's going to be when my player touches the enemy. So instead, we're going to change this to enemy. So it reads on sprite of kind player overlaps a kind of enemy, right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to head over to our info section and we're going to change our lives at minus one. If we change it by one, we'll gain a life every time our enemy hits us. So let's try this out. Try this out. Oh, why, why did I lose the game? It says game over. So the reason this happened, guys, is like I was saying with the fireball, every time our ghost overlaps us, every pixel he's moving, it takes away a life. So the way that we got to switch that up is we can actually get the destroy block. I'm going to duplicate it using my right click and we're going to destroy the enemy. So the enemy is sprite two, I believe. So I think it's good. Uh, let's try it out. OK, so I lost a life there. Now, 
I have one life left. Let me let me kill a couple enemies, and I'll die here. Three game over. But that's basically the whole game, guys. Uh, if you guys want to make it a little fancy, you guys can add your own enemies, your own characters. You guys can spruce it up. But this is how your final product should look something like. I have my little character. You can fly around. He has a projectile, kills one ghost. And that's basically the game, guys. So if you guys enjoyed this game, uh, please drop a like. If this tutorial was helpful, if you guys understood even a little bit, please let me know. Um, and if you guys want more coding tutorials in the future, uh, write a comment, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video.